a hangout space, which is really cool. Got some awesome couches here and, and some awesome stations. And I'm sitting right next to Richard Garstegen. Richard, welcome. Hi, how are you, Eric? I'm doing fine. Are you enjoying the VMworld? Absolutely. I'm also uh, relaxing in the hangout space, one of the few places where it's very calm. Okay. <laughs> As you can see from Richard's court, he switched from VMware to Oracle. And I'm going to ask him some questions about licensing in an Oracle environment. Are you okay with that? Absolutely. So I'm going to show you a, a short scenario. When I have a few ESX hosts, and those ESX hosts are in the DRS cluster, and my virtual machine is running on this one, and I want to put Oracle on it, uh, and there is a possibility that the virtual machine will use vMotion to migrate to another ESX host, uh, do I have to pay for those other physical hosts? Yes, so or Oracle, in a moment an app, come an Oracle application, and that's a database or an end user application, comes on a physical server, it needs to be licensed. Uh, the physical server needs to be licensed for it. So the best way, if you have like a, a 10 physical server environment and you think that you need capacity for five servers for Oracle apps, is to group them into a single cluster and then you only have to license those five servers. You can even save money because you can consolidate, of course, more than five virtual machines on those servers. Uh, but any physical server that ever would run an Oracle app needs to be licensed for that particular app. So when the Oracle comes in, uh, they actually look at the, the, the virtual center log files to see where a virtual machine has lived in its past. And on top of that, there's also a special table in the Oracle database which records the CPU IDs which were used by the Oracle application. Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. no. Okay, okay. Uh, so let's do another drawing and clear this picture. Say, VMware has host groups and virtual machine groups. And when I'm drawing four ESX hosts and I'm putting two ESX hosts in a host group and the virtual machines are only able to migrate between two of those ESX hosts, they're still in the same cluster, but the virtual machines are not able to jump to any other of the physical machines. Is it okay for Oracle? Yeah, so I mean, it's after off, uh, at the end, uh, after you're running, Oracle comes in, we check up, and as long as the logs will show that the, the Oracle app has not been on a particular server, and I don't care if you do that by using clustering or whatever technology you use, or just massive, you just pin it down to a particular host by with host affinity, that's fine. As long as it doesn't come on a server, it doesn't need to be licensed for it. So there's one other thing, you can apply two rules, a shoot rule and a must rule, uh, regarding the communication between DRS and HA. The shoot rule means that the virtual machine must run off one of these ESX hosts, but when those hosts are both going down, the virtual machine can be started on another ESX host. The must rule means that when both ESX hosts are down, the virtual machine stays powered off, even though other hosts in the clusters are available because of the licensing problems. What do you prefer, the shoot of the must rule? It depends on how big your wallet, I guess, is. I mean, if you do want the application to, to migrate to a third server, then the moment that happens, it will, it will mean that you will occur a cost. Okay, and only the third server will be charged, or all the other servers in the cluster? All the, other, well, all the servers that will ever at any moment run the Oracle application. Okay, that's pretty clear. Thank you, Richard. One final thing, because a lot of people always ask this, we do, of course, support virtualization and, and running our Oracle applications on VMware or on Hyper-V or on our own platform, because there's still a lot of times people don't think we don't support it. It is fully supported, we just don't certify it. Oh, that's very interesting, because I heard a lot of people complain that when they want to create a support call, they have to reproduce the error on physical hardware. So th that's definitely not the default. Um, I mean, we can't replicate, of course, the full environment in-house because we don't run vSphere or something like that. but. Our support will take the call. They'll first, we'll see what goes on, and only if they think it might have to do, have to do something with the hypervisor, then we'll ask you to, to replicate it. So okay. it's, it's not by default we'll ask you to go replicate any support issue that you'll file with us. So when it's hypervisor related, there might be a chance that they want to prove that it's really the fault of VMware or virtualization or anything, but as long as it's a normal application problem, it, it's supported in a virtual environment? Yes, the support will just take the call and we'll, we'll provide you support. And the only time when you, if you run Oracle or VM, then we'll get, we will never ask you to migrate it because that's something we can put in-house. Uh, but yeah, it is supported uh, and there is a chance of, that we would ask you to put it in-house, but it's definitely not the de facto. Okay, many thanks for the explanation, Richard. Thank you.